It's code review and design time. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, and recently I reviewed a video that was talking about clean architecture, CQRS, and what I thought was a lot of unneeded indirection. But also in that video, there was some API design that I didn't really love around nullables and throwing exceptions, and neither did you based on the comments. So here are my thoughts around that design, some refactoring what I think it should look like, but more importantly, why? I wanna thank EventStore for sponsoring this video. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So here's the original design from that code review I did. I'm gonna point some things out and dive a little bit deeper into them and provide some refactorings of what I think it should look like. So we have this mediator query where we're injecting this I order read service. And the first thing we're doing in the handler is calling that I order read service. We're calling get order by ID async. So let's take a look at it. First thing to notice here is that it's returning a nullable. So we could possibly return null when we call this. If we look at the implementation, we're just using our DB context. We're fetching our data out. But the important part here is we're calling first or default async. So if there are more than one record, we're just gonna get the first one that we run into. Otherwise, if there are none, you're just gonna be returning default, which is gonna be null. So if I jump back over to this code, because we're possibly returning null, we have our null check. We're throwing an order not found exception if it is null. Now, as you'd expect, we probably are using this query in mediator, let's say from something top level in ASP.NET Core is the example. And if that's the case, we then now need to catch this order not found exception so that we can return something more meaningful in HTTP back to our client, possibly like a 400 or a 404. Now, the first thing I wanna to touch on are really expectations, specifically with that data access. It was calling first or default async. Now, first or default, let's touch on the first part of it, meaning that we have some expectation that maybe there's more than one order ID, but we probably know that can't exist in our database so that really potentially could be masking a problem if there are more than one record. Now the default part is meaning that, oh, maybe that order ID that's been passed doesn't even exist. And that's where it comes from expectations. Now I'm not talking about this was called directly from a public API. This was kind of buried within layers of indirection in my opinion. But the point is, is that we're using null as a way of specifying, okay, this record doesn't exist but I still go back to, well, why would the record not exist? At what point, if our app is the caller of that method, of that service, why would we be passing an ID that does not exist? So can we kind of remove all this concern about nullables, about more than one record? Why wouldn't we just call single? So if the expectation is that the caller is gonna pass an order ID that actually exists, and then there's only gonna be one of them, because we know that based on our schema, we can just call single async. Now I can get rid of the nullable here. I can keep going up here, remove it from our interface. Now I need to backtrack through all this indirection, which we know that in our handler, this is never gonna be null. So that way we can just remove this entirely. I could actually even get rid of this and just return this. And we gotta backtrack a little bit more and actually go into the controller because we can see where we are actually calling detail here and sending our request with mediator, this is also not possible anymore because we're not uh, throwing this exception. So therefore this all can get removed. Now the thing is, is that if you do pass an order ID that does not exist, that singular, a single async is gonna throw an invalid operation exception. And that would bubble up all the way. And if you have a custom error handler, you'd probably get some type of 500 that you'd return. Now you may say, okay, well, that's not good, but really the only way that's gonna happen because this is MVC and being rendered server side is that the way to get to that is via a link. And we're the ones producing the link in our actual page. So really the only way this is possible is if somebody were actually change the URI, change the ID in our route to actually produce that exception, which then would result in a 500. Now, a lot of this comes down to what type of app are you building? Is it something just internally in your company where if somebody was changing the URI manually and ultimately that throw an invalid operation exception and then a 500, is that really a big deal? 
you know that the input, how you're directing people is gonna be valid. They have to be going out of their way to produce the 500. But maybe it is an issue and you do wanna return a 404. And we can do this without throwing or returning nulls. And one option we have for this is an option, an option type. So I've added one here to our interface and we're saying, okay, now instead of returning a nullable response or just a response, it's gonna be an option order response. I've changed our definition here. And what I've converted now is I'm saying it's single or default async because I'm gonna want internally this to possibly return null. Now what we're doing is we're checking that. We're saying, okay, if it is null, then I'm just returning an option of none. That's kind of the representation of it. Otherwise, if there is a value, we're saying it's sum. If I go back through all this wonderful, not really wonderful indirection, you'll see that now what I'm doing is I changed the signature of this query handler to do the same thing. I may be returning a response. So I'm representing that as an option. So I can just send that back the entire way. Now, if I go back up to our controller, now we can handle this so that we can pass it to our view or return a not found. So the way that looks is we're getting our response here, our view model, it's an option. We can call match on this API. We're saying, hey, we're returning an action, I action result. It's either gonna be, if there is a result, if there is some, let's pass it to our view. If there's nothing, if it's none, then we're gonna return our not found. So I've done this all by just using an option type I'm not dealing with null and I'm not throwing exceptions. Now, whether you choose to create an API that's returning nullables or an option type like this, I think generally your thought is that you're being defensive because you don't want bad inputs. And if you're gonna be defensive, likely you end up doing this everywhere and you have to handle, if it's null, manually you'll have to deal with it. Otherwise with an option type, it's kind of forced upon you, but you have to do this through all your different layers or abstractions all this indirection, you potentially have to handle it. Now, again, context matters. Are you dealing with a public API? What kind of response do you need to return? A 400 or 404 could be very valid for a public API where somebody's consuming that isn't you, some third party. That'd be really helpful. So likely you'd wanna do it. But again, if it's some type of private internal API and you're expecting valid values, you can go through kind of save yourself a lot of headache and not have that expectation that somebody's gonna pass in random data. If you were to call single and it were to throw an invalid operation exception and bubble all the way up to the top layer, and let's say this was some HP API and that returned to 500 and you logged it, you'd probably like to wanna know that was happening because that's really unusual. What would you possibly return back to the client to say, hey, that wasn't useful, you should do something with it? If you return them back a 400 at that point or a 404, they're like, great, okay, what do I do with this? You'd wanna know that something's gone bad. It's the exact same thing as the illustration at the very beginning where it was calling first or default. At no point would I ever wanna do that because it's really masking a problem that there's duplicate records when I'm not expecting it. So a lot of this comes down to your context and expectations. Now, as for throwing exceptions, in the original example, I removed it throwing an order not found exception. I think the original idea there was to be specific about what was actually occurring. The problem is it's not explicit at all. Anytime you're throwing an exception, you have no idea from a caller's point of view that that actually might happen. So from our controller, we were calling mediator and that's where that exception was being thrown, but we need to know that, which we would then have to look at the implementation of the handler to see that. And then we're using that try catch as really as control flow so that we can return a not found. The exception is not explicit. The return type is. If you found topics like this interesting and you have your own thoughts or opinions, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server where you can chat with other software developers about topics like this. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.